Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we are working on Module 6, Lesson Number 8, and the objective tonight is to understand uh, fractional equivalents to investigate decimal numbers on the place value chart expressed in different units. So that's a big mouthful, but it basically means that we're going to sort of be composing and decomposing units today to figure out uh, different ways to express numbers. Numbers, after all, are flexible things. They're not easily broken, and as long as we attend to precision, we're going to be able to express those numbers in different kinds of units. We've done this before in previous modules, but we're going to do it again tonight. Some of it will look very familiar to some of you. Okay, let's take a look at one of our problems. Problem number one. Use the area model to represent 220 one hundredths. Complete the number sentence. Well, 220 one hundredths, as we saw in the, um, in the problem set, one of the things is we can just express this as tenths. This is the same as 22 tenths. And the reason I know that is because if I did this, and I'm not going to bother, but if I went ahead and I broke each of these all the way across, if I broke this 10 different ways, I could make each of these into hundreds, right? And I could say here's 200, here's, I'm sorry, here's 100, here's 200, and there's 20 more, all of these, right? I could do all of that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and erase my work here. I'm just going to do that mental math in my head. Boy, I did do a lot of a lot of lines here, though, so it's going to take me a second to erase that. Um, so I know that I can express 220 one hundredths as the same as 22 tenths. 22 tenths. Awesome. So let me go ahead and shade in 22 tenths. That'll get me started here. 22 tenths. Let's see that. Here's 10 of them. All right. Here's 10 more. That's 20 tenths. And then I'm going to go ahead and shade in a little bit more. Equals how many ones? Well, let's see. That's two holes, right? Here's two holes right there. So that's two ones. And how many tenths? Oh, okay. That's these two, right? Two tenths. And I could express that in decimal form as two holes and two tenths, or 2.2. I'm going to leave one B to you to explain how we determined your answer to A. Let's take a look at number two. Number two asks us to draw number disks to represent the following decompositions. I'm going to look over here at this problem. Three tenths. Let's see. Let's go ahead and draw three tenths. I'm going to get my medium-sized pencil and draw myself three tenths. Awesome. And so the question is, how many hundredths is that? Well, we could go ahead and decompose those tens into hundreds, right? We could decompose each one of them. Each one of these tens would become... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? The next one would as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that last tenth would become 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have decomposed three tenths into hundreds. How many are there? Well, there's 10, 20, 30. 30 hundredths. Three tenths is the same as 30 hundredths which we've done by just using number disks, kind of the same way we used to do them when we were practicing division. Awesome. Well, I think that gives you enough to go ahead and solve this problem. Oops, I'm using the wrong pencil here. Gives you enough to solve this problem right here, as well as these two other problems in number two. Let's take a look at another one. I'm going to do parts of three and four here. And number three asks us to decompose the units to represent each number as tenths. So I'm going to take a no, no, 3C. We have 1.3, so one whole and three tenths. So let's see. We could take our whole and decompose it into tenths. That would be 10 tenths. And we already have three other tenths. So that would be 10 tenths plus three tenths, or 13 tenths. 13 tenths. Right? And that actually makes sense, because if someone told us we had 13 tenths, we would go ahead and, and convert. 10 of them into a whole, and that's so we've just done this in reverse right here. Let's take a look at number four. We're going to decompose the units to represent each number as hundredths. Well, this is just the same process. It just is one more digit to the right of the decimal, right? Tenths instead, now it's a hundredths. So I'm going to look at 4C here. 1.3. So let's see. One whole is how many hundredths? Well, let's see. One whole would be a hundred hundredths, right? So that's a hundred hundredths. And this three tenths, that would be thirty hundredths. So that's 100 plus 30 hundredths, or 130 hundredths. Now, you know, I always find it a little more easy to see this if I look, redrew that number as 1.30. If I could see the hundredths digit here, it might make it easier for me to understand that 
that these three tens are in fact the same as 30 hundredths and that this one whole is the same as a hundred hundredths because we can see exactly how far it is from the hundredth place. Um, but if you want to use that strategy, you can go ahead and do that. You can also just do that as mental math or you can use the place value chart briefly. You can just go ahead and plunk down a little place value chart of, let's see, ones, tenths, sorry, and hundredths. And you can say, well, if we had one ten and we one whole and three tenths, how many would those make over here? And so then we're going to decompose these into these, into tenths, and then we have uh, thirteen tenths, and then we're going to decompose thirteen tenths into a hundred and thirty, hundred and thirty hundredths down here. So a quick little place value chart can sometimes be helpful as well. Let's take a look at one more problem tonight. Problem number five asks us to complete the chart. The first one has been done for you. In fact, I'm not going to do any problem on this one. I am just going to walk through the one that they did. So they started with a decimal number. That's 4.1, right? And they said that's four holes, right, and one-tenth. And they've expressed it here as a mixed number, the fractional form, four holes and one-tenth. And then they said, well, let's just rewrite that whole number in tenths. So this is the same as 41 tenths. How do we know that? Well, first we have to look at the whole, right? The whole is four ones, but we could express uh, four holes as 40 tenths, right? And we could express that last tenth right there, and that would give us 41 tenths. And if we can express it as 41 tenths right here, well, then certainly we could express it as hundredths, right? We, another equivalent fraction, we would just multiply the numerator and denominator both by, uh, by 10, and we would get 410 over 100. In other words, 410 hundredths. So we can do that with fractional form just like this, uh, and we should be able to do that uh, with each of these decimal numbers, which with 5.3, 9.7, 10.9, and 68.5. In each step, we're just taking our mixed number, we'll first create our mixed number, and then go ahead and create like units in tenths, and then like units in hundredths as a way of figuring out how we can fill out this chart. So I hope that's enough help to get you going on tonight's homework. Thanks for joining me again for another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. See you again next time.